Hey guys, it's been a little while. I'm headed on an adventure today. Follow along, I'm with Kluk and Chimu Adventures and today we're at Domestic Airport for the first time in two years. So we're not going too far, just down to Antarctic and back. It's a day trip, I'm not getting off the plane. So we take off from Sydney, but we land in Sydney again. It's a flight all the way down. We circle around for about three, four hours, take a lot of scenic photos and then come back. So technically it's a domestic flight, but the flight goes for about 12 hours, I think. So stick around for that. I'll show you how I shoot out of a plane and the gear I'm bringing and give you some tips along the way. Should be pretty fun. Antarctica has been on my travel list for quite a while, but this is probably the closest I'm gonna get for now. Hopefully I make it to the actual Antarctica and set foot on it, but let's go. We're taking up a Sydney, but we're landing back in Sydney. I'm happy to be back on a plane, to be honest. So it's very strange being back on a flight after two years, but I've missed it a lot. I'm on a plane. <laughs> we're about three hours into the flight. We're almost at the tip of where Antarctica starts, but keen to start seeing some icebergs and ice and a lot of white mountains and stuff. But yeah, we're gonna hack, fly around Antarctica for about three, four hours uh, as a scenic flyover, and then we're gonna fly back to Sydney, which is another three to four hours. So.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed those scenes. I had a great time. There wasn't too much to vlog on the end of the trip. I was mostly just eating and sleeping the whole way. They feed you really well on the plane. If you couldn't tell, I was pretty excited to be back on the plane after two years. My last flight was probably the Japan vlogs in March 2020, which you can watch right here. I thought I'd end this video with some photography gear tips to tell you what I brought and also some photography shooting and editing tips because it can be quite challenging shooting from a plane window if you've never done it before. So in terms of photography gear, I packed my bag full to the brim because I didn't know what I needed. But in hindsight, I only really needed one camera body and two lenses basically. A 2470 and a 7200. I brought a 1635 because I wanted to vlog but I didn't use it as much. With the 2470, the plane actually gets quite close to the landscape, so you don't actually need to zoom that far in. A lot of the cases, the 7200 was too tight actually. So 2470 is great for most cases, but the plane does tilt and turn, and there are things in the distance, so that's where a 7200 telephoto lens comes in handy. With the 7200, you can zoom in on details and also zoom out into the distance if you see any compositions you like. While it would have been handy to have two camera bodies on me, so I could have one lens on each, it gets quite cumbersome when you're sitting in an airplane seat having two big camera setups to try and hold. So what I did was I shot a lot with my phone. I used this as a wide camera which the quality is pretty great and I had a 70 to 200 on the main body. I think a phone and one camera body is pretty much all you need. Alright let's move on to some photography tips on shooting from a plane. It can be quite difficult if you've never done it before. So here are some photography shooting and editing tips. First of all, there's plenty of time to shoot on the tour, so there's no need to rush. You have hours to shoot as the pilot will circle back and forward so everyone gets a good view. Try to shoot with a higher aperture so more is in focus. I shot mostly at f5.6 and f8. I would highly recommend shooting raw because some of the images you have to edit quite heavily to get it to how you like. Due to the combination of the airplane window tint and atmosphere and haze in the distance, the photos might need to be edited quite heavily to add contrast and to get rid of the color tints that happen. Here are some examples of photos before I've edited. As you can tell, some of them are quite hazy and tinted and it did take quite a bit of editing to get it to where I would like. In most cases, you should be able to color correct a lot of the photos in Lightroom. What I found in Lightroom helped the most was the contrast, tone curve and dehaze function. Another thing to watch out for is the engine jet stream. When I was shooting with my camera with a 70 to 200 on, I was zoomed all the way in looking through my viewfinder out the window and I couldn't figure out why all my photos were not in focus. I tried manual focusing and I thought there was something wrong with the lens, but actually it was the jet engine's stream which was distorting the image a little bit, but because I was so zoomed in and looking through my camera, I didn't actually notice it until I put the camera down and looked out the window and saw that it was fuzzy because of the jet. The solution around this, I guess, would be to shoot above the stream or maybe get in front of the wing where it's in front of the jet engine so you don't get that jet stream. If you can get to the front of the plane, that's great, but I actually do like having the plane wing in some of the photos because it gives you some context of where you are, which is on a plane, and it adds some scale to the vast landscapes. So I hope those tips helped. A huge thanks to Kluke and Chimu Adventures on taking me on this adventure. If you'd like to book this trip yourself, I'd highly recommend booking with Kluke. With Kluke, there's instant confirmation. There's a skip the line functionality at major attractions, a Kluke price guarantee on all activities. The user reviews are verified on Kluke's website. Kluke is contactless and COVID safe. And you also get to support local Aussie operators. So I'll leave a link in the description to Kluke's website if you wanted to book an adventure like this yourself. If you want to see more content from this Antarctic trip, check out my Instagram. Thanks for watching, my name's Ichban, see ya.